I'm Greg Meredith, one of the environmental educators that works for the Grand River Conservation Authority. And he, we're here today to talk about dam safety and safety in and around water, in particular around our water control structures and places that are really potentially dangerous for people. That could include boaters, swimmers, or people that are fishing in the river as well. The Grand River Conservation Authority, we own 27 dams. Seven of them are multi-purpose dams and a number of others are what we call low head dams. The big dam that you see behind us here, that's the Shan Dam. The Shan Dam road here at Lake Bellwood today. Um, this dam was built in 1942 and it was built primarily for flood control, low flow augmentation, which means we're able to take some of the reserve, some of the extra water that we have in this lake, let it go downstream for communities that can use it for water supply and to preserve the health of our watershed for not only ourselves humans, but for some of our wildlife, like we have our egret over here that's looking for us, okay? Water's an integral part of a healthy watershed. In the 1800s, our rivers were primarily used for transportation. The Grand River was a major place that people could move uh, lumber and materials and stuff that they needed to live with up and down the river. Back then we didn't have highways, the rivers were our highways. A lot of our small dams, our low head dams that we have, help with not only for recreational purposes, but they were built for power and to help with the transportation. For our large multi-purpose dams, um, as boat traffic, you can see we have some people putting in and taking out boats here today at Lake Bellwood. We have signage as you approach the dam indicating that there is danger ahead or potential dangers ahead. In addition, just in front of the Shan Dam here, you can see a boom. And those floating buoys, the yellow buoys that you can see along the front of the dam, they're all attached together. And that's a boom to prevent anybody from getting caught or going downstream or getting too close to the dam. It's just an added precaution to the signage we have warning people that there are dams ahead. Some of our boom markers are yellow and some of our boom markers are orange. Both of them bright colors to warn potential boaters of dangers ahead. When you come down to the bottom of the Shan Dam here, it's hard to imagine what's on the other side of that giant wall that we can look at from here. But on the other side of that wall is Lake Bellwood. And in Lake Bellwood is a huge lake. It's almost 12 kilometers long. It holds 64 billion liters of water. When I say numbers like that, people have no idea how big it is. If I asked you to count to 64 billion, if you could count as fast as the fastest man in the world ever to count to a million, it would take you 156 years to count to 64 million. 64 million liters of water is a lot of water. We have to make sure, one of our roles is to make sure if it travels downstream, it doesn't travel downstream too quickly because it is a potential hazard. So for flood control purposes, there are times when we need to open up one of the gates on the Bellwood Dam or one of our other multi-purpose dams. Before we do that, or as we're doing that, we can sound off a, lo a loud horn and that horn can warm users that are downstream, people that are potentially in the water fishing or fly fishermen, et cetera, that are, their water levels are potentially changing. They can actually change fairly rapidly and they can change kilometers downstream. It's always, always important that you be aware of your surroundings when you're fishing or swimming or playing in and around water. Whenever we need to open or close a gate on one of the dams, one of our dam operators can be on top of the dam. Before they go in to open or close it, they can look at downstream and to look to see if there's anybody in a potentially dangerous situation. They can sound the horn to warn any users that are in the river of that potential danger that is coming, and then they can go and operate or open up one of our gates as need be. Along both sides of the dam and along at the top, you'll see that we have fencing, barriers and other things in place to prevent people from going to places where we don't want them to be. A place where there are potential risks or danger and hazards. Again, we have signage. The signage is there for your safety and your friend's safety. It's really important that you obey all signs at all times. Yeah, so upstream here you can see the buoys that are marking the danger ahead. And the danger in this case, we'll show you in just a second, is the low head dam at Bissell Park that's behind us. If you were canoeing downstream, if you were using on a paddle board, these buoys would tell you to be cautious. And again, there's some portage signs on the sign that you can get out and walk around. And as we look downstream, or as you travel downstream, the portage would end up on the other side of that, below the dam down there. You can see there's a course signage that says, danger, dam, no swimming. Signs are really important. We don't put the signs up because we think they're pretty. We put signs up because they can save potentially people's lives and you need to obey signs at all time. And from here, when you look at the dam downstream, you can see again, this is a low head discharge dam. You can virtually not see it. You might not realize when you're canoeing up or traveling up to this dam that it's here potentially 
if somebody was to go over top of the dam, they could be seriously injured or even, heaven forbid, somebody would die. So water downstream can be equally dangerous. We're just coming up here and just ahead of us is one of our low head dams called the Bissell Dam. If you look ahead and you can see that in the water we have buoys and the buoys are there for boaters, canoeists, paddlers, people who are using the river to travel downstream. And from here you can't actually see the dam at all. On the top of that dam or that bridge, that footbridge in the distance there, you can see a sign that says danger dam ahead. And just beyond that in the water is one of our low head discharge dams. Over here you can see we have signage on the side of the river as well saying that there's danger, there's a dam ahead. And um, we often have kids when we're out and about with our education program asking us what is the danger and that's what we're here to talk about again today. And this is an exit for a portage. So because obviously we don't want people canoeing close to the dam or over the dam, um, we have signage along our rivers and our travel ways so that people can park their canoes or their boats, whatever they need to, they can get out and portage their canoe or equipment around the dam in a safe fashion. Water downstream can be equally dangerous. And in the river over here, you can see that there are buoys in the river, very different than the yellow booms that we saw at Shandam up at Bellwood. The booms, of course, are designed to mark our, one of our large multi-purpose dams. We put buoys in the river to mark our low head dams. And the buoys, instead of booms, is because if we had booms here, any debris floating down the river, if there were sticks or trees even in the river after major flood events, they could get tangled up in the boom and they may actually make flood conditions worse or the dam even more dangerous. So buoys would allow for debris to flow over and get stuck in the dam and not in and amongst the buoys. So again, we've just passed the buoys. If you were in a canoe, you would be seeing this sign on this nicely placed overhead walking bridge saying danger dam ahead. And if you look downstream here, I can just see a couple of spots on the dam where you can see some white water just bubbling up, but it's almost impossible to see that there's a dam there. You might hear a little bit of water, but you might think that that's rapids or other water downstream or even a windy day, you might not even hear that. These are one of the most dangerous things that we have on our river system and some people refer to these as drowning machines. And unfortunately, um, uh, on every decade or so, we end up having an incident at one of our dams. And in 1998, we had an incident at our Park Hill Dam in Cambridge where a 12 year old boy well, and his friends were playing in and around the Park Hill Dam. Unfortunately, he got caught in one of the sluice gates and he lost his life. Um, equally tragically, there was a police officer on site who attempted to rescue the boy and sadly that police officer lost his life on that day as well. Um, dams are not things you ever want to play in and around. Um, they look like fun. Um, they're attractive because it's beautiful water, but they're places you want to stay, stay away from. And that's why we have danger, dam ahead signs. That's why we put the signs out. They're not there to look pretty. They're there to potentially save people's lives. Of course, when people approach our dam from onshore, we want signage warning them about dangers or potential dangers here as well. And in the river over here, you can see the Bissell Dam. And here is a really good look at a low head dam. We walk down a little bit farther, you can imagine that if somebody was to unfortunately slide over that dam or, or accidentally canoe over it or get caught in the water upstream, potentially they could get caught in that water below the dam. We refer to that as a boil. As people travel over a dam, they could potentially get caught in that water and that water is kind of like a washing machine. It just keeps turning backwards and turning backwards. And people can get caught in that water, pulled back into the water, up to the surface, pulled back under and back in. So a combination of sort of reverse eddies can catch people in that boil and potentially could be fatal. Unlike our multi-purpose dams, which are primarily used for flood control, low flow augmentation and water supply, many of our low head dams that we have today really no longer have the purpose that they were originally designed for. Today we, have, we use them for recreational purposes, in some cases water supply, um, but we really keep them here for historical reasons. The Bissell Dam was built to generate power for a flour mill. And over here on my left, you can see the mill race. The water would have been redirected from the mill. They would back the water up. That water would flow through the mill race, flow through a water wheel, generate energy, and or turn a stone that could be used to grind flour into wheat. All this talk about water, that makes me want to go for a swim. 
but I just want to remind you that you should never swim around any of our water control structures, any of our dams. They are not safe. They are not places where anybody needs to be or play. We have barriers out there. We have signage. Those are all reminders that you should be somewhere else. And if you do want to go for a swim, join us in one of our conservation areas. Our conservation areas where we do have swimming, we have marked beaches, we have, safe, we have places that we've deemed as safe, and that's a place where you can go swimming. If you want to find out any more information or if you want to talk about stuff with your teacher, you can contact the Grand River Conservation Authority on our website. We can give you a link that tells you where to get a copy of our booklet, Play It Safe and Playing It Cool.